to talk about. I rarely disagree with uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins. I think he's extremely important. Um, he's right most of the time, for the most part, in my opinion. And I think he takes the right, right approach, for the most part, because he, his function is kind of that middle of the road type person and administrator type person in business, which is so necessary for where our community is going. Uh, but on this particular issue, I think Dr. I, Dr. Boyce Watkins is wrong. He's mostly right, but he comes down on the wrong side of this issue. First of all, Dr. Boyce made this video, um, which he was correct in making the video. Uh, when Doc, when Now, first of all, here's the situation. Our people are at war. Our people are at in a state of defending themselves. We are at war. It's a very difficult war to see because now this war is starting to get hot. It's starting to get actually hot. And um, because it's getting hot and most of our people are still asleep, they don't understand because the war has been kind of a cold war for at least about 50 years again. But now the white supremacists forces this is white supremacist forces if you don't understand that uh, I mean right I'll explain that to you later but in this video you should know what the army of white supremacy is the enforcement unit of white supremacy is its police force now the thing is here we're in this point of time where this thing is hot. Now this war, people were able to deny it and ignore it because it has not been hot. It has been um, all these other issues, you know, with the the, uh, the chemical warfare, the psychological warfare, the warfare on your financial, the financial sanctions, all of the, the different things they do, you know, the, uh, containing of the most violent and the most deadly conditions uh, in the hood. The creation of the ghetto, the hood. And uh, you know, bringing prison culture from outside of prison into these places that's called the hood. These are the type of things that, uh, you know, that police are vital for it. They cannot maintain and contain our people, our greatness, without the police force that they use, the way they use it now. Uh, and here it is. Okay, now some of us make it outside the hood so we come from a different perspective. And some of us are trained in the, the, the armed forces and you know, and like Dr. Boyce, his father, uh, who a man who he really admires, and he knows who's a good man, was a police officer. So if you're coming from that perspective, if you're coming from that perspective, you're going to love police. You're going to love them. Even though you see, you, it's almost like your mom or your parents can almost do no wrong. You always see your parent. You come from that perspective. Uh, but even if you are mature enough to admit when somebody is wrong, you come from that perspective. So when you come from that perspective, you're going to, you're going to tend to empathize with, want to empathize with the police. You want to empathize. You want them to be like your father. You know that there are good people in that police force and you want to find those good people. You want, you want, you know, you want that to be there. At the same time, at the same time, you have the majority of the people, the growing number of people, of our people who are dissatisfied with the police, with this 
race soldier gang warfare type of squadron which inhabits our it's not your father you see it's not that good police officer that you grew up with way back in you know maybe the the 80s or the 70s you know when there were decency they had the appearance of decency or maybe even the 90s some decent people it's not that police officer who who's black first i know some good police officers police people but see that system has to be good in order for those people to be good so the point is here the people are so dissatisfied with the, the flow of the people you see you know especially when we start talking about black nationalists you know solving our own problems which is what Dr. Boyce says you know we believe that black people can solve our own problems okay as we begin and work in the hood to solve our own problems we realize that the police they are there to stop stuff from degenerating to a really low level, but they're also there, some of them are there to prevent things from elevating to an extremely high level. They will harass people for selling water. Young men, they harass young men for selling water. They have to do that in Atlanta. Uh, we find where when black folks are securing apartment buildings and uh, doing things to develop ourselves and our business, the police are sent out to shut it down. The police are sent out to enforce ridiculous coding, things like that, to try to, which tamper people. And of course, you know, you have to submit to regulation but the type of regulation that often is in the black community is anti-black business, anti-black small business. A lot of it is. A lot of it is. It makes it very difficult for black small businesses to do business and to develop themselves. And they don't solve problems like we expect them to solve. The police are not there as a solution-minded entity. They are there to find or create problems and exploit problems. That's what the police in many black neighborhoods and communities do, especially for young people. They're there to put fear in people. Uh, they often have people who abuse the authority that they have been given. And so people over the years and decades and decades and decades, you gotta realize that this is a, this is a overwhelming force. This is an overwhelming force of anti-white anti supremacist style policing in the black community. Now, I would ask Brother Dr. Boyce to consider this. We have to prepare. There's nothing you can do when you start trying to convince people you're making sense. You're making logical sense if we were not at war. I mean, the thing is, he's 100% right. And, but the thing is, he's, he's pretty much 90% right, 95% right, I would say, uh, in what he said uh, for LeBron James. LeBron James put out the tweet, accountability. He put it out a little too early before he understood enough of the facts of that particular case with Makai Bryant. But at the same time, LeBron James was on code. That police officer... And it's not necessarily, okay, but the thing is, now that we know more of the situation, we know the police was still wrong. Now that needs to be said, because that police officer right on his hip, he had that taser. He had that taser. But at the same time, these police are trained to murder our people as the first thought. That's the first command. That's how they are trained. They are not trained to shoot anywhere but murder and kill shots head and and torso death shots this is it that's warfare training that's soldier training and they justify it because they're following their training 
so that individual officer may not have been we may not be able to demonize that individual officer but the police as a whole the murderous police as a whole you have to you have to condemn them for that training and we know who trains them this is IDF Israel Defense Force and other murderous type agents these are soldiers coming back from warfare situations where they're going over there terrorizing other peoples of the planet so so you can't apply domestic logic in those kind of situations what I would say to Dr. Boyce is this you are correct uh, that the sister looked like she was about to stab the other sister and there's a lot of things going on wrong in that situation we should be policing ourselves uh, the, the parents were there the, the father was there acting a damn fool I put all of it on him I put it all on that father he failed he allowed that enemy to come up in the, in the, in the community and kill his daughter but as we go into the police we still have to, we, we, since we know that we are at war, we cannot take the position of the enemy. We can't be uh, looking like, because the thing is, we, we're dissatisfied with their policing. So we need to abolish their police and replace it with a security force, with our own security systems. Now, are we ready for that? Well, we better get ready. And that's where I would like to somebody like Boyce Watkins or anybody else to consider if they if you're black first and you see a situation like Makai Bryant knowing that maybe she wasn't all the way correct and maybe like that police officer now I, mean, I can see it's very easy for us to take that side of that police officer but if I if we were not in a situation where decades and decades of abuse of police uh, then I can see this. I can see it. I understand it. And like I said, I'm trying to be very fair. But like I said, at the same time, you have to understand the overwhelming flow. It's like a river. It's like if you was in the Serengeti and the Serengeti is, is flowing north, you're not going to jump in the Serengeti. I mean, it's going to take a lot of force for you to stop the Serengeti from flowing and make it flow south. This is what's happening here. This is coming from decades and decades of police abuse in black communities. If it's not your perspective that the police has abused you, I understand that's not your perspective because you come from a situation where you don't see the police as abusers. But I, I just need you to understand that the, there are so many instances that police have abused so many people that you're getting this overwhelming force. So when LeBron James criticized and said accountability, okay, I think the tweet was perfectly correct and I wouldn't have took it down because the thing is, I could say that that tweet represented, even though that tweet would represent the accountability of that police force for training, for sending uh, trained killers into our community instead of sending problem solvers uh, who have the authority of force. The man have a taser right on his, um, right on his, uh, his, 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 right there. Just as quick as he grabbed that gun from that distance, he could have grabbed that taser even if the girl would have stabbed her once. She, by the time she even got to her, she would have been tased. That taser was right there but he's not trained to grab that. And everybody wants to argue for the girl's death. And that's why I said LeBron James tweet accountability was correct. He should never sit down. He should not. And then now here it is. Okay. So yeah, I voice was correct. LeBron James, he has too many Twitter followers, too many Instagram followers to delegitimize himself by um, sending out tweets like that willy-nilly because he he's in a particularly powerful space that 
if he could if he would uh, send out more strategic tweets then he could help the cause a lot faster he can legitimize people he can serve to legitimize people that the system is trying to delegitimize so he should save his credibility so I do agree with Boyce at the same time because he did make that mistake um, and Boyce is correct to correct him for that mistake but at the same time, we got to still get on the side where we're not, you know, LeBron is our brother and he did it f from the right spirit. He put that tweet out from the right spirit and the damn L.A. PD, I call, a, you know, Sambo, black cop who, because he, first of all, LAPD, that uh, gang uh, captain or that gang chief of police out there, Villanueva in LA, who has the damn gangs, banditos, he got jump out boys, he got uh, these damn uh, executioners, and he's a part of one of these damn gangs and the police force, and he will not criticize his damn police force for killing and abusing black people all on camera beating up other police officers uh, for snitching you know this blue wall thing that Villanueva uh, you know he sends out this black guy to, uh, to, to ask to try to help you know to try to switch the narrative from the abusive situation out here in North Carolina where the police set up here and drove drive by shooting uh murdering a black man you know uh, uh Arthur, i forgot the man's name arthur ryan or something like that but the point is you got a situation in north carolina you got joyce floyd's murder on camera you got situations in multiple cities where these police unions are sending out people to and, and having these meetings Okay, probably with their little cops because they want to put the public in their place as if we're slaves. This is, this is, you can't do this. You know, we can't, we're not going to have these people doing this. So these police, the people are not going to be satisfied with this type of policing. It's going to be abolished. Now, if, you know, it, it may take a while for that. We don't know. But people are not satisfied with it. each mistake these police make. And they will make more mistakes. They will murder more people. They, I mean, they will do this more and more. They can't help it. It's the, it's the nature of their system. Boyce was afraid that, you know, we're going to have even more dangerous type of cops. Um policing our communities because the uh, you know real good ones because uh, he said that we were brainwashed that uh, all police are bad and, um, and I understand that and it, it is dangerous it's going to get dangerous you know I already know every day you know and anybody could get killed you know these police are nuts these look, the situation in Virginia tells you with the with, even with a with a black soldier these people are absolute goofballs they're nuts but they've been nuts and the thing is we ha it has to be exposed the, they have to delegitimize themselves the police are delegitimizing themselves LeBron James is on the right side he should not sit down with that fool cop unless I would tell uh, if I was LeBron, I would tell that cop, I was like, okay, I'll sit down with you if you bring your chief, Villanueva, and I'll bring Minister, uh, I'll bring, you know, Minister Farrakhan, or I'll bring, um, the, I'll bring, um, Minister Tony in, out there in LA. We'll sit down together. How about that? Because, you know, the thing is this we can replace the police department in these communities.
we have that ability. And just like Dr. Boyce said, black folks, we can solve our own problems. Yeah, we can do that. But the people have to be at a point where they're ready and receptive for that. And the only way that we can be receptive for that is if we, if these police, they have to delegitimize themselves and we're not going to help them delegitimize themselves, but we're not going to, um, you know, if they're willing to change and make it right and start policing correctly, then that's what, then we'll be fine with them. But the thing is, they're not going to do that. And so abolish the police, it's not really for us to actually, it's, they're going to make this happen themselves. It, it doesn't matter what we all think. This is the trend. And so this is what I wanted to say here with that because, you know, Dr. Boyce, he made, a, a, like I said, mostly all those points that he made was good. Very good points. The people pushed back at him, but I, I, for the people... Dr. Boyce is, a, he's not a traitor, but people really believe this stuff because it's very confusing in this time. And, and a lot of people still disagree with me. And, and that's why I say even coons, even people who right now they behave anti-black, they, they don't understand what's happening. They, a lot of us really don't understand the, the point in time in history that we're living in. This is a change. Each time in history, our community grows and we become dissatisfied with certain things that we we tolerated in the past. And just like most communities, you're not going to tolerate an Asian, a predominantly Asian uh, community. They're going to want Asian police officers. Uh... In, 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 in law enforcement because they want people who understand them. Uh, just like any other community, you're going to want the people from your community to police your community, but they have to be able to police it in the way that is right, not white supremacists in black face. And that's what black folks have a lot of times. We have a lot of white supremacists in black face. And, uh, you know, good cop, bad cop games. No problems, not much problem solving, not much, uh, you know, investigation work. Because a lot of investigation work will, will stop a lot of crime. It'll stop, a, it'll make our places safe to live in. I mean, because a lot of the criminals that live in our community, they are not smart at all. You can, they... You can find the really evil and dysfunctional people. You can get rid of them if you did a little investigation. Uh, people, whistleblowers come to the to the police all the time from the black community and are, are always ignored. They're ignored. So, yeah, the thing is that needs to happen uh, because we can't have these damn police. We, we Our people are just sick of it. We're sick of it. And can't have there's going to be a certain amount of our people that have that uh that think of think of it in a more holistic way on both sides and try to do the comparative analysis and try to look at it from various perspectives but that's not how change gets done in this world change comes from those people who are crazy when people are sick and tired they're not logical and they just want it done that's when you know it, it, it's nothing you can say. So your job is to be on the right side of where this thing is going so that you can help guide the community uh, to make the pain uh, as small as possible. That's all I got to say on that. Yeah, but LeBron James, is he, he didn't do it from the wrong spirit. And he should not sit with that police, that little puppet from L.A., PD who knows there's gangs in the LAPD who knows they're racist and then that Columbus cop that police force is training killers to go into the community even white people and I've heard uh, white folks that live in Columbus talk about 
how those uh, cops are trained in that city. So, no, uh uh, the police they made their bed, they got to take that L. They need to look bad, they need to look bad. They have to do the work to improve their own image, they need to submit. The police are an employee. They serve at the luxury of the public. And this is what the police and the police unions have gotten it twisted. These police serve at the luxury. And any good person, I would not recommend a good person. If you are a good person and you're into security, form a security service. Help us organize security services. To, and, and try to come up with a model to where the community can fund a security service uh, instead of, in that way, the police are not legitimized in our area. We don't want them there. We don't want no regular old white, no, white supremacist style police in our area. We're done with that. We're done with it. We're done with it. We're done with it. All right? Peace.